Hi everyone, this is Teo. Welcome to another time lapse sketching video. This video was created from my full length tutorial that's available on my Patreon page. So if you want to check out the full length tutorial or if you want to support my YouTube channel and my website, you can do so over at Patreon. Patreon is basically a monthly subscription service where you can pledge a certain dollar amount to help out the artists that you like. I will also be making this tutorial available on my Gumroad page in the future, bundled with other sketching tutorials. Now the full length tutorial is 30 minutes long. This video that you're watching now is the condensed version which is only 7 minutes. But I'm still going to talk about some of the sketching techniques that I used for this particular sketch. This sketch was drawn from a reference photo that was taken in front of a Chinese temple. These stalls, they were selling flowers and joysticks and also other offerings to the gods. So what caught my attention was the bright yellow and red umbrellas that these stalls were using. There were also a lot of people there on a weekend. So I wanted to basically capture the energy of the place and also the bright yellow and red umbrellas for this sketch. If you want to check out the reference photo, it's in the video description below. Right now I am using my Pelican M200 fountain pen to create the line art. So when I'm drawing this scene, I will draw from the big shapes to the smaller shapes. I'm not sure if you noticed earlier on, I started by drawing the big umbrellas first because when I draw the big shapes in, I can then go in and fill in the smaller details later on. I am not going to run out of space because I have already fitted the largest element onto the page so there's no way for me to run out of space when I'm drawing the smaller elements. So that's one way to plan your composition and this is one technique that I use quite often which is to draw the largest element that you want in your scene first. Also while drawing I will take note of the foreground and background element. I will try to draw the foreground elements first because those elements will overlap items in the background and when there are overlapping elements in your scene they provide a sense of depth, they create a sense of depth that makes the scene look more dimensional, more 3D. It also lets the person who is looking at your sketch get a sense of perspective so there are other clues other than overlapping elements that give clues to perspective and sense of depth. The other is the scale of objects in your scene. For example, if you take a look at this sketch right now, people who are standing in the foreground, they are larger, and people who are standing in the background, they are smaller. So that's perspective. Objects that are further away are going to be smaller. So this also creates a sense of depth. And now I'm painting the watercolors over the line art. The ink that I'm using is Noodler's Bulletproof Black Ink, which is waterproof when dry. When painting watercolors, I start with the lightest color. I usually start with yellow because yellow is the lightest color and it's also the easiest color to make dirty. So I want to have my clean brush. I want to have a clean brush when I use the yellow. The next color that I use is usually green or orange because I can mix green or orange with yellow. The next color that I use would be either red or blue because they are stronger colors, they are darker colors. I do not. After I fill up all the scenes with the bright colors, I will mix gray tones to fill in the shadow areas and after everything is dry, I will apply another layer of shadow tones just to provide that extra contrast. Usually when you look at scenes in the real life, the dark areas, especially the shadow areas, they are very dark. They are almost close to black. So you want to capture that contrast. Contrast works for colors, contrast works for line drawing, for values as well. When you place a bright color against a dark color, 
the bright color will look brighter. So if you were to paint a color against white background, the white of the paper, then the color may be bright, but it's not going to be as bright if you were to paint it with a black or darker background. All right, so this is the completed sketch I took probably around an hour or one and a half hours to draw and paint this. If I were drawing this on location, I would be standing and drawing. If I were to sit down, the view that I will look at will be different. If I'm standing, the eye level of all the people who are standing and walking, they will be the same as my eye level. So I will be able to see all the people and I will be able to draw them in. If I were to sit down, I will be blocked by the stalls that are in front of me so I cannot see much of the scene. When I am on location drawing, I will usually spend a bit of time to just walk around to find interesting spots, interesting views to draw. Sometimes I would stand, sometimes I would just squat down just to change my view to see what's different. After that, I will try to imagine the scene on my page to see if I'm able to capture what I want onto my page, whether my page has enough space or how big or small I should draw the elements in order to fit everything in. As for the colors that are used in this particular sketch, for the yellows, it's Hansa Yellow Medium. For the red, I used two reds. The warm red is used for the flowers and the umbrella. The cool red is used to mix with French ultramarine to get the purple. I also used French ultramarine, of course, with some burnt sienna to get the gray tones that are used for the shadows. The dark greens are mixed with Hansa yellow medium and halo blue. So that's all for today's video. I hope you find this enjoyable to watch. And remember, if you want to support me and my YouTube channel or to help me make more videos, you can support me on Patreon and Gumroad. The links are in the video description below. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.